internet world. And welcome to On the Shelf, a now independent podcast hosted by and for YA readers. A quick note before we launch into today's episode. We have a conversation as part of the episode about both the continued importance of books about injustice and the way that authors of color can be pressured to feel obligated to write about white race in a way that white authors are not. It was pointed out to us, to several of us pod members, that the way that we initially portrayed this idea was not placing enough importance on the continued necessity for books about racial injustice. We want to explain this ahead of time and also apologize. And upon looking back, I can also see how some of the conversation was said in an ambiguous way that did not make clear the, cr- the true intention of the article that we were referencing on this and minimize the absolute necessity for stories about racism. This podcast tries to cover a lot of different topics, and our goal is to remember at all times that a lot of us are talking about subjects that we have not personally experienced. If you, the listener, ever feel that there is something insensitive or misinformed in the episode or that we are not doing a good job of that goal, please reach out to us in the comments and also please see the article in the show notes that was mentioned. It does a much better job of explaining an idea that we did not give voice to in the best way. And to clear up some of the ambiguity, ambiguity when we talked about the oversaturation of YA Lit, We were saying that it was oversaturated with books by white authors. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed the episode. Hi, guys. We're back with another episode of On the Shelf. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about, um, well, in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, we're going to be talking about anti-racist books and books about the civil rights movement and really just in general about um, race in America and anti-racism in general. Um, It's kind of the theme here. Um, and we have a lot of people here today, so it should be a good conversation. It's kind of going to be one of our more traditional, like, book listy conversations that um, I guess we're quote unquote known for. Um, but yeah, we'll start off with just kind of our usual introduction and what's on our shelf. Hi guys, it's Jada. Um, currently, nothing is on my shelf, not because I finished a book, but because I have like been really bad about reading technically I'm still reading the same comic book which should not be this long but I just haven't felt like reading I guess um but I'm just, I could finish it in like a couple hours but am I doing that no besides the point though but that's what's technically on my shelf hi I'm Honora um so to date on my shelf, I'm currently reading In Cold Blood by Truman Capote for my AP English class, and it's it's quite it's quite a thing that's happening. Um, it is enjoyable, but obviously, like it's a true crime book about a real murder that happened in the 50s. So it's like it's a I don't know, it's a tiny bit hard to read, but it's just um, it is it is really interesting. But yeah, so that's what I'm currently reading. Hi guys, um, it's Caitlin. Um, Jada, that is extremely relatable. I have nothing like from home on my shelf. Right now in my English class, we're reading um, The Awakening by Kate Chopin. Um, So that's been on my shelf for the last two weeks. Um, But I also haven't been like reading a lot these like in January in general. And I'm hoping I can do that some more. I want to like get back into something that I want to read but um for now the awakening for now um it's Caroline and I am still reading the night circus it's still good (laughs) yeah hi everyone right now I'm reading Crescent City by Sarah J Mass I've read it before I've been in a bit of a reading slump so I told myself I'd read it again because I already knew I liked the book so yeah my name is Taylor um and I am currently reading um, this book called The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro. And it's a historical fiction, no, that's not the right word. It's like a weird fantasy, Arth- like based on Arthurian legend kind of thingy. Um, it kind of reminds me like if, I don't know, it's like sci-fi meets King Arthur because it's about this community in ancient like Arthurian day Britain um 
in which like no one can remember anything that happens like longer than a couple days ago because of this weird supernatural force um and then there's sort of like an epic journey and I don't know it's weird it's like kind of in between it's like it's hard to categorize this one genre but it's really good so far um so for our first question let's see we are going to be just kind of starting off with a book list um of um kind of books that we have read I guess presumably over the past year but just you know, in general, that are kind of on theme here, whether that's sort of like um, kind of anti-racist theory books, like how to be an anti-racist or like fiction that kind of has that as a central theme, like The Hate You Give or, you know, anything kind of a nonfiction, you know, anything kind of along those lines is our topic. I can go first, I guess. Um, So my book list is not very long don't read a lot of nonfiction. I should really like maybe start. I don't know. Um, but I have I'm Still Here by Austin Channing Brown, which is about her experience growing up Black. And it's really interesting. Um, I read it. I listened to it on audiobook on like a trip. So it was good. Um, I don't remember much about it, but it was good. <laughs> Um, and then I have Stamped by the Jason Reynolds version. Um, that one's really good. It's like, it very effectively like tells you the history, like the systematic racism. Um, and then I have Angie Thomas just as an author. I have not read On the Come Up, but I have read The Hate You Give and I have read Concrete Rose and both of those are really good. Um, and then I have This Is My America, which is a story about a girl whose father is in jail and she is trying, like, he's possibly wrongly accused. It's been a second since I've read it, but she's trying to get him off of death row. Um, it was really good, though. Like, really interesting. It has, like, a really, like, nicely woven in, like, mystery element to it. And then the last book I have is Ace of Spades, which is kind of dark academia um, about two black kids at a predominantly white, like rich private school and they're being targeted and like all their secrets are being like just laid out. And it's really interesting and it's really good. So for me, um, I have like a mixture of books I have read, some I haven't, and then a lot of them too were kind of like middle grade from like the website that I used. Um, But the first one that I have read, I have read it a long time ago, was The Skin I'm In by Sharon G. Flake. Um, I read this like sometime in middle school, I think, but I want to reread it because I just remember how much I loved it. So that's one. Um, Another one is Freedom on the Menu, the Greensboro sit-ins by Carol Boston Weatherford. I picked this one because we are based out of North Carolina, so I thought that would be fitting. Um, Also, too, because that was like a big monumental moment in North Carolina history. Um, Then I also chose Coretta Scott King. I kept um, Marching by Kathleen um, Kroll, I think it is. Then Child of the Civil Rights Movement by Paula Young, colon, possibly, I'm probably not saying that right. And then Because We March by Russell Friedman. Again, a lot of these were kind of like middle grade or like even not color books, but like children's book books, I think. But of course, still very fitting. Yeah, um, I, I really did not have a ton for this. And I, you know, it's... Um, just because I don't read a ton of fiction. Um, But one of the main ones I have, which I know I've talked about before, because I read it for school last year, is Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, which is about, like, um, a Black woman in the 30s, kind of, like, the progression of her life and and coming back home and stuff. And it was, um, that it's a difficult book to read just because of, like, how it's written but I feel like it is like an important book to read um and oh sorry one of the um it is fiction and it is fantasy but one that I remember 
really enjoying. It's called um, called The Bells by um, uh, Danielle Clayton, and I don't know. It had a really um, it had really good messages about like specifically like beauty and being able to um, accept yourself as you are and trying not to really like change for people and the, it, I don't know um it's been years since I read it but I remember like that message and it was kind of, it was like to everyone you don't need to change who you are no matter like um what this like the societal standards are and I just remember you know it was very impactful and it was just like so um so well written and you know obviously like all of the Angie Thomas books because that is truly like um a staple in YA fiction and it's like I don't know it just everything she's written is so good and I don't know obviously you know you can't have you can't have your list without mentioning at least one of her books just because it's been so monumental but yeah that that's all I have for for this one okay my list is also pretty short short because I mainly read fantasy I don't really read nonfiction, contemporary but of course I'll start off with The Hate You Give because it's such a great book and I haven't watched the movie but I've heard that's great too has a lot of good messages of the civil rights movement and then also an old book but also a classic To Kill a Mockingbird that one has tons of themes about civil rights and racism in the past and it's a really good book with a great trial that shows you all the nuances how different people react to a murder or like a trial about racism and then also these few books are like middle grade children's but they're also really good books one crazy summer I don't know if you guys have heard about it but it's basically about three girls who go to California to live with their mom amidst the whole civil rights movement and they get intertwined with the Black Panthers movement. So you learn a lot about that and you look at the girls as they learn a lot about the Black Panthers and everything too. And they go through a lot of crazy stuff as the title suggests. So that's pretty good. And then the last book, Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. That's one of my favorite books of all time. And it is also like children's book, but anyone can read it and it's written in verse. So it's really interesting to see how the author grew up because it's also based off true story by the author. Okay. So I unfortunately also kind of realized that my list was pretty short, which kind of, I was a little surprised because I felt like I, I, I felt like I tried to read a lot of like own voices books this year, but I realized as I was looking through this list that that didn't necessarily mean that they were books like that were about the civil rights movement or historical. Um, you know, there's, you know, there's definitely a difference. Um, I mean, that's included, but um, there are a lot of options there. And like, I definitely think that I should, I should definitely look into that more. Um, books, you know, books that are about like the civil rights movement, also books, you know, by, by authors like Angie Thomas. I have not, um, definitely the civil rights movement. I love historical fiction so much. And it's on my, it's one of my reading resolutions to read more historical fiction. So that's definitely an area that I want to look into more, but um what's on my list so there's two main ones that are ones that I haven't really talked about on here before so that's why I chose them so the first one's called Kindred by Octavia Butler which I actually read for the first time a couple weeks ago um and Octavia Butler I actually um so she was one of the first um I think mainstream published um black female science fiction writers um and dystopia writers I think she wrote like the parable of the sower and like all these different books um and this one kindred is about this woman in the 1970s who gets pulled back in time to during um antebellum to during like the antebellum south um in Georgia I believe and she's like linked with this young boy who is um the son of a plantation owner and she is like his great 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 grandchild I think um and she has to make sure that he stays alive so that she can still be alive but at the same time she has to like watch the horrible things that he's doing and she's sort of like 
she's stuck in this world and has to kind of quote unquote adapt to it. And I think, cause I read, I read like an academic article about the book afterwards. And I think a lot of the point was kind of to show how insane it is, how much people get used to a bad situation. Um, uh, cause also like she, she travels back in time, but also her partner who is white also ends up traveling back in time and like he starts to kind of get used to the way of thinking there in a way that's kind of chilling and disconcerting for her and like it's just kind of a commentary I think on how yeah on that whole idea which was really um I don't know in a lot of ways it was really haunting and I think at first like I was kind of comparing it in my head to Beloved because that's another book that I've read that's um kind of about the antebellum south And at first, you know, Beloved seemed a lot more, it it seemed a little bit more chilling because things were described very starkly and very realistically. But then I realized that this kind of, it's like a slow um, psychological kind of feeling that kind of settles in over time. I don't know. It was really good. I think it's a really important book. Um, And then the other one, very different, very different time period, but it's A Raisin in the Sun which I read for school last year, um, which was just really, really good. I really liked talking um, in class about like all of the symbolism in the book and sort of um, the history of the author. And it's really fascinating. It's one of the only things that the author wrote, but it's like a work of genius. So it's it's, it's kind of crazy that she, she didn't really write much else, but um, it's really interesting for those of you who don't know, it's kind of about this family who buy, they're trying to buy this apartment um, so it explores themes of gentrification and it's about this family trying to move into um, a very like almost all white neighborhood and sort of the the conflicts that come up with that and like this and also like the psychological tension in the family. It's really, really good. But that's my list. Yeah, that's right. I like um, I was so bummed that we didn't read that last year because I think we had a couple English classes that wound up reading it but um uh I also have um a shorter list that I than I would like and that's like one of my um goals I think that we talk about later like um a lot of it goes into that um but two books that I have that are kind of like theory I do have um How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi um really really good I've gotten to read probably about 12 chapters of it online for a book club through our school um so I really want to get like a um a tangible copy of it so that I can finish it um because I thought it was really interesting how he discussed like how his mentality changed from when he was young and then um like as he continued to learn as he got older he was able to like share his ideas with other people um and share how he was like able to change as well um and then we also I got to read a couple excerpts from where do we go from here chaos or community um which was really interesting because I never like really read as much about um Martin Luther King Jr.'s um kind of like mentality on certain things um I knew a couple quotes but I never really read like the kind of things that he was thinking about and what he taught um and his ideas on that were really, really interesting to read. Um, so even just from the excerpts we read, I was like, yeah, I want to read some more of this if I can um, to know like what his position was on some of those things um, and how it impacted like um, his actions and the way that he taught and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, I also have um, Angie Thomas. Um, one of my goals is to finish reading The Hate You Give and to actually read Concrete Rose because I never read Concrete Rose um and I've heard from you guys and from um everyone else wonderful wonderful things so I really want to read those um and then one middle grade book that I read a couple years ago was Towers Falling by Jewel Parker Rhodes this one was interesting um and I really enjoyed it because it's kind of about like um a young girl who is in the fifth grade and her family is struggling financially. Um, but we learn through the book, like, because they're so young, they don't really know what happened um, during 9-11 with the towers falling, like her and the kids in her class. 
Um, and she learns that her father either worked in one of the buildings or was um, a first responder there. I forget which, um, but he wasn't provided any assistance after what happened. So he got really sick and wasn't able to work. Um, and it talks a lot about like the, um, like the misconceptions and prejudice ideas from like um, certain kids' perspectives because they didn't really know about what happened. Um, and I like that they kind of incorporated race as a central idea of the story, even though it talked a lot about what actually happened. Um, and then the last book that I have is one that I want to read that I haven't read. It's called Dear Martin by Nick Stone. Um, and this one looks really interesting to me. I've seen it a couple times um, on the shelves and I've never actually read it. Um, but it was kind of like a, it's a young kid who um, like kind of writes a journal to um, Dr. King to like, he's searching for answers um, about the injustice that's going on in his area. Um, and he gets, winds up getting directly involved in it um, in a chance encounter. So I really want to read that one and see like what he had to say and um, how he kind of got to those ideas. But um, yeah, uh, those, those, that's my list. Yeah, I believe everyone went for that question. Um, so our second question, I think some of you may have to restate things you said for the last one, because originally it was um, just about new releases, but we decided to kind of change it to, um, well, if there are new releases you have that you want to talk about, feel free to talk about them, but also just books in general that you have not gotten the chance to read yet that you want to. Um, okay, so I think I'll start. I have a super long list. Um, there are a lot that I really want to read. So one that looks really interesting is called Just Pursuit by Lauren Coates. And it takes like a deep dive into the justice system and sort of breaks down like every single step of the way, the way that systematic racism is sort of baked in. And I really, I really want to read that because I feel like I, I know pieces and parts, you know what I mean? Like I, I can like I can conjure to mind like stories that I've heard and things that I've read about injustices at different points along the justice system, but I don't feel like I have a complete picture in a way. And I feel like I really want to know more about that, especially because, I mean, I'm in debate. I'm really, really interested in policy and law. And so I feel like I, especially if I want to keep going with that, and if that's something I'm really interested in, that I really should have a deeper understanding of that. Um, so that looks really interesting. Kind of in the same vein, um, Just Mercy is a book that I think a lot of us have probably heard of because there's a movie um, that came out a few years ago and it was a great movie. I watched the movie, um, but I really want to see it, uh, read the book because it's about this um, lawyer who's trying to get these, um, um, the word is escaping my mind, um, inmates off of death row um in Alabama and I think the statistic was that no one had ever been acquitted off of death row in the history of Alabama like it was it was really really difficult for him to do but it's kind of an amazing story um Born a Crime has been on here for so long um like it's been on my list for so long I really want to read it um I really yeah I it's been on there for a long time I started reading it and I just was immediately kind of pulled into the story and the way that he talked about things and the way that he wrote about things was really interesting um and then let's see and then I had a couple that were um very specifically civil rights era historical fiction so the first one is called The Rock and the River by Kekla Magoon and it's about this family um in the civil rights movement where the dad is very supportive and a part of sort of um MLK's teachings and sort of like very involved in that kind of area of the civil rights movement and then the young son is um a part of the black panther party and it's about like the clashes that the family has between these two um kind of different viewpoints as to how to tackle civil rights um so that looks really interesting and then uh this this other one called fire in the streets which is similar but it's about a girl who wants to join the black panther party that one looks really interesting to me especially because i've read like where did I read this? I like listened to a podcast. 
at some point that was talking about feminism in the Black Panther Party, which made me be really interested in this one specifically. So that's my list. So mine, I would say is a little bit shorter. Um, I t- did like take two books off because I own them. I haven't read them, but I can technically say that, you know, I will eventually read them. But the first one, which was a new release, I think it comes out sometime in March this year, but it was called The Hookup Plan. I didn't really see the synopsis that much, but I saw something about like, um, something about someone was the, was a like pediatrician, I believe. And from what, what I can say, assume from the title like it it gives romance one which you guys know I love but I think it's going to be about a pediatrician and this guy I'm not really sure somehow they get together I don't know they're probably going to end up together and I really didn't read the synopsis but I can probably kind of piece it together the second one was Ace of Spades um I know like it's been everywhere and a lot of people have been raving about it so that's on my list um, then I want to read more Angie Thomas because she obviously has more works than The Hate You Give and Concrete Rose. Um, on the come up, I've heard that that was a really good one. So that's on my list, but just a couple just like of her other books. I do want to read Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. I heard that one was really good as well. And then I do want to read more of Terry McMillan because she wrote the um, Waiting to Excel, which I've seen the movie and I really liked it, but I would, of course, like to um, read the book, but that was pretty much my list. For me, there are a few books, actually, that I forgot these were even on my to-be-read list, but now I've seen them. So first up, Hidden Figures. Uh, you probably heard about the movie, which was pretty popular. So it's about how, like, the civil rights movement and these three women impacted the space race between the U.S. and Russia. So the movie was really good, and I watched that, so I've always wanted to read the book. And also The Poet X. I'm not sure if you've heard about it, but I've seen a lot about it. And it's about this girl who basically writes poetry to talk about the tension and conflict that her family's going through with civil rights and racism. And also, like Jada said, more Angie Thomas specifically on the come up because I've seen that everywhere. I've heard a lot of good things about it and it looked very interesting. And then also they called us enemy. It's by the guy from Star Trek. I think his name was George Take. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm probably butchering it, but basically he was in the American concentration camps during World War II because he was Japanese. So <clears throat> I really wanted to read that one too. Yeah, we I um I also have never actually read the book Hidden Figures. I really want to read that. Um thank you for reminding me. Um yeah, so I also had what did I have here? Um there was a book that I found um called And We Rise that's coming out soon. I think it's coming out this month or maybe this spring um, by Erica Martin. Um, And I added this one because it kind of talks about the civil rights movement in verse or in poetry. Um, And one of my reading goals was to read some more um, like poetry style, essay style books. Um, So that seemed really interesting to me. and then also um, more Angie Thomas, uh, really want to read Concrete Rose and on the come up. Um, I really just have to like um, get some of her books and uh, and read them because I've really been wanting to do that. Um, and then there was also um, a book called One True Loves by Elise Bryant, um, which looks really cute. Um, it was kind of cool. I like reading the description. Um, it's about a girl who I think is going off to college um which is going to become relatable weirdly um but it seems like a really sweet story um because her family like bonds with another family who has a son her age and I think they kind of like um get to know each other and start to like um fall in love with each other or something like that and I also don't read a lot of romance so I was like oh that might be cute like um to actually uh get into And then um, the last ones I had uh, were some more books by Elizabeth Acevedo, I think. I I hope I'm saying her last name right. I think she wrote 
the poet X, that was one that seemed really interesting. Uh, and then clap when you land. So um, I'd love to check out some more of her work, but yeah, I'm excited. And oh, I'm sorry, Caroline. Um, sorry. Um, I just haven't, I had something to say on that because I think Elizabeth Asabajo, uh, I think she in, um, she also wrote with the fire on high, which came out in 2019. Um, which is one of the ones on, um, on my list. And, you know, um, yeah, I also forgot Hidden Figures was based on a book. Um, but I feel like that would be really interesting to read to kind of get, um, the uh, additional depth because, you know, the movie can only really cover so much of a book. You don't really get any of the internal monologue or any of the, like, um, initial, uh, not initial, additional analysis of things. And, um, um, but I've really wanted to read, um, I think it's, they called us, um, hold on, lost my train of thought for a second. Yeah, they called us enemy by George Takei. That's been one that's been really on my list because, um, he seems like a really, like, genuinely nice person who's like um been able to like make it through all of the stuff that's happened in his life and is just and um I don't know and it seems like it'll it's like an interesting story something like a good thing for people to read to be to like be aware of especially from someone who lived through it at such at such a young age and I know there's also a graphic novel format of that book out um but yeah um and you know obviously I want to read more Angie Thomas because she's a very very talented writer and um I'm very excited to see all of the other stuff she will come up with and write in the future just because you know as I said she's just so talented and it's one of the main names in um why fiction and as Jada said in the chat we stand Angie Thomas yes we do it's official on the shelf stands Angie Thomas <laughs> but um yeah because all of us mentioned <laughs> Angie Thomas but yeah I don't know um yeah that's that's what I have Caroline I'm very sorry for interrupting you I'm the second person to interrupt you <laughs> so good <laughs> so my list I have one newer like I think coming out this year and then the rest are just like books that I want to get to. Um, so the new release that I have is called Black Joy. That looks interesting. I don't know much about it, um, but it's by Tracy Lewis Griggs, I think. Um, and then the books that I just kind of want to get to at some point that have been out for, I don't know, some time. Um, the first one is Blackout, which is a, I think like a short story, maybe like uh, it's written by multiple authors, so it has Danielle Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Angie Thomas, um, Ashley Woodfolk, and then Nicola Yoon, and it's about, like, Black teen love during a powder outage, as Wikipedia says, um, so that looks really good, um, and then I have How to Be an Anti-Racist, I would like to read that at some point, maybe in the summer when I don't have to worry about school, um, and then, so you want to talk about race. And then the last book I have is Hood Feminism, which I want to say it's an essay collection, but I'm not positive. Um, but it's about like feminism and then intersectionality. I don't know if that's how you say that word, um, but like how it kind of forgets like marginalized women. And I think it sounds really interesting. So that's my list. And very quickly, I think um, I completely forgot about Tiffany D. Jackson. I love her books. Um, yeah, I those yeah those are ones I have read. I'm blanking on what they are. Um, but yes, I feel like she's a very good author to mention in this because the um, they cover oh. Right, Monday's Not Coming. Monday's Not Coming is like a sad book, but it is so good. Um, and I read it in sixth grade for some reason, and I remember reading it, and I was like, 
this is almost a bit too much but it's like it's so well written and it's um it's so sad but it's like weirdly really hopeful but um and yes and I also read allegedly which is another book by her obviously I'm talking about her but um which is like really um the topic of it is really like difficult because um because it's called allegedly and it's like allegedly the protagonist killed a baby and that's like the whole thing that she's this young adult who is living in um it's she's not like in jail but it's not like juvie either but it's like for teenagers who have committed a crime and um and so basically I believe she was a nanny and the or a babysitter and the and it was a white baby that died while she was watching like caring for the baby and it was like you know the justice system of America did what they do and like basically um you know and so basically um so she was I think she was in juvie and now she's living in a group home um trying to make a new make trying to make a new life for herself and that one is really like it's not like difficult to read like you can understand it but you know it's just like the subject matter and how it's written that it's just like really it's like it's sad to read but it is um she's a um tiffany d jackson is also a really good writer and she can really make you feel things which i think is kind of a kind of a dumb thing to say but um i don't know she's just a very good author that can make you like feel and empathize with people in um and it's i don't know but yeah um again sorry for that even though i know i already gave my book list um i don't yeah i think taylor has the next question yeah okay so our next question is here i'm actually gonna i'm gonna switch the order on things guys so so sorry i'm gonna switch things up but um the next question is i didn't actually phrase this very well but like what is kind of like what are are there like certain more specific topics that you're kind of seeing being published about a lot um and I I switched it up because I wanted to go first because I found this really interesting article that so I think it's now going to become a theme which is that I so the last time so when we talked about native authors I got halfway into the episode and then started talking about the fact that I found an article that the whole idea of Native American literature is like ridiculous because people write from very different perspectives and it's not fair to like put it all in one category. And so then I changed the name of the episode to Native Authors. And similar here, I was just looking up trends uh, or not trends, but like sort of um, sort of how anti-racist literature is developing. And I found this really interesting article that was talking about like, as this genre is unfolding, there's sort of concerns and like commentary about the way that the genre is being influenced by the mainstream publishing issue industry to one, they kind of talk about how sort of books like how to be an anti-racist, which is an incredible book. Like this is not like in no way against these books because they're great. Um, It's just, um, this article is talking about the pressures of the publishing industry on black authors to one only write about race, which I think is really interesting. I've read stuff about that before, um, which is kind of why I didn't want, kind of why I made the theme more specific. Cause I didn't want to be like, Oh, like every, every author has to have written specifically about race, but it's really interesting because it talks about how like there can be a lot of pressure that that is the topic that you have to cover. Um, if you're an author of color and then it also kind of talks about how anti-racist literature things like um like some of the books that we mentioned are like almost directed at white people in a way that you know at sort of educating them in a way that people are wondering now like as we see it unfold is it going to be 
helpful or is it just kind of like another way of the publishing industry? I think the, the, the wording they used was really interesting in this article because basically they were saying like mainstream publishing is in a sense like capitalizing on oppression and on people writing about those experiences, which I just thought was really interesting to think about. Um, yeah, like I, um, I really appreciate that because that's um, like also a way I haven't looked at it like that before, like where um, like the importance of like the story and like what the author's trying to say doesn't get like changed because of like the money purposes or the publishing industry, like trying to make it something different, like something that it shouldn't be. Um, yeah, so I really appreciate that. That is a, re you do find really, really fascinating articles. I think that's cool. Um, Cause that's not a way that I've looked at it before. Like how the message could get pushed into like a smaller box because that's what like might sell to like a certain um, like publisher or something like that. Um, for like certain kinds of themes, um, I like touched a little bit on, let me see, where did I put it? Um, oh, there we go. Um, I've read a couple books recently that have touched on like community, like a community aspect of things um, and like the importance of it and um, like respect of communities and other communities. Um, and also uh, police brutality was another one that I put down. Um, and things like that. And then I also have, this might go actually more into goals, um, but there's a book that I've been wanting to read that kind of combines like the idea of um, identity and race with um, other like forms of activism. Like there's a book uh, that I really wanna read by Vanessa Nakade called A Bigger Picture that talks about like her identity and how she relates it to her activism toward climate justice. Um, and I found that really interesting. So I wanna check that out, but um, yeah. Um, so kind of like jump off of the article, um, I could totally be like misinterpreting it, but that's why I'm kind of interested in like Black Joy um, because I, this past year read you should see me in a crown for a book club. And something that I really liked about it was that it was just a story about a black girl. Like it wasn't, it was just like a black girl in love. And it was really nice to see. And like, as I mentioned earlier, like the stories about racism and oppression and like teaching are important. And a theme that I've seen recently, I don't know if this is a theme or just sort of like a, bigger picture I've seen a lot more fantasy books written by people of color which I think is really cool because like you know the classic dystopian um white girl in love with two guys um and so seeing and like there's nothing wrong with that but it's just been so like saturated I guess like it's such a big part of the fantasy genre that to see like protagonists of color like written by people of color. Yeah, like Children of Bun and Bun is a really good book or like Legendborn. Um, like those types of books are just like, they're becoming more prominent. And I think it's really cool because fantasy is my job. Yeah, and it was also, oh, I'm so sorry, Jada. <laughs> um, You're good. Um, I don't know, just kind of going off of what Caroline's saying, it is really cool seeing um, other, um, like, different types of stories than kind of the basic YA, like, building blocks that, um, which are, there's, like, nothing bad with them because they worked, and people realized they worked and realized they could make money off of it and just started and kept doing it, and there's nothing wrong with you know people reading the classics and YA fiction but it's also cool with like seeing either like people kind of mixing mixing up the tropes to make something new with like um the characters of color which is really cool and just kind of taking the basic generally like all white tropes and fitting them to um go with new narratives that um 
that I guess in a way can be like more universally enjoyed and also just like be a different type of book um because you're right like so much of the stuff in YA is so oversaturated um and it wasn't even like a genre 20 years ago like it wasn't a thing and then as soon as people were like teenagers like to read they just were trying to like find um anything they could work and um yes I can take the last question I know Jada was about to speak so I will hold off on ta- on yes. saying the last question <laughs> but I'm so sorry about that I will go ahead when Jada is done <laughs> But um, I do agree, and I see you guys' point, but for, for me, I feel like it has been such a thing, like um, police brutality, just racism in general, and just, just talking about the inequalities, because those are still prevalent things, and I feel like a lot of just people of color in, in general, but I feel like Black artists specifically, they still feel like those stories and just those inequalities are not spoken about enough. Of course, yes, it can be too much and everywhere you turn is a book about um, police brutality. It does get depressing, but these are still things that are still happening. And it seems like this stuff isn't going to go away. So of course, people are going to write about to bring change and to bring awareness towards it. So of course, I understand what you guys are saying, but it, it's just like a matter of I feel like my voice is still not being heard. So why not write about it and get the word out? And hopefully it will touch someone's heart and hopefully change and they will go out and help um, change happen. Oh yeah, definitely. Sorry. Let me just clarify. I, I definitely, I totally did not mean um, that those books are not important. Um, I definitely, yeah. I was kind of more just saying when, um, when authors feel like they're being, forced into writing a a story that has to convey a weighty message all the time rather than because you know like there's not that expectation for white authors um and yeah all I was talking like all that the article was talking about was um what do you call it was just like that black authors should have like the choice um but yes I definitely I definitely was not saying or wasn't I probably came out that way but I definitely was not a trying to say that um that the books are not um important or that they're like too depressing so yeah I just that's just thank you I, I just wanted to make sure that that yeah that I definitely appreciate that expect, perspective um yeah I definitely agree so yeah I just wanted to make that clear that I was definitely not trying to say that and yes I'm going to put that article in the show notes but yes I Thank you, Jada. All right. Wait. Okay. I think I think everyone went for that question, and I'm not interrupting anyone right now. Okay. Anyways, um, record on this computer. I'm recording now. Yay. Okay. Goodbye, Taylor. Thank you for being here. And she's gone. Okay. So, um, uh, I'll restate it. Just you know, for um not contingency sake, but just so seem cleaner. Um, what are, what are, what are all of our reading goals for books in this area? Yes, Caitlin, you can go first. I'm so sorry about that. I, um, I was like, oh no. Um, I have like three main ones, I think. Um, I really appreciated what you guys were saying about that. Cause like, I want to read some more nonfiction and essay type books um, by people of color to get more of like, um, like experience perspective and um, hear the kind of things that they're witnessing that are going on firsthand um, and get to learn more about it. Um, So that's definitely one goal because I don't think I do enough of that. Um, And then I also want to read some more YA stories written by people of color and read more YA stories with weeds that are people of color. Um, so I'd like to do some more of both of that because um, uh, I have, I know a couple of like some of my um, authors that I really enjoy reading um, are, but I don't think I have enough diversity in that kind of stuff that I read and in the main characters that I get to read about. Um, so those are a couple of things that I am definitely hoping to do um, lots more of this year. So hopefully 
I will have some more stuff on my shelf to share soon um, with that in mind. For me, my main goal, I guess, would be to read the TBR civil rights books that I mentioned earlier, like the George Dake book and the Angie Thomas book and the rest of them too. So that would be my main goal to finish those because they're my TBR. And also, I guess it would be like similar to what Caroline was talking about about how more fantasy books these days are being written by people of color with people of color leads. I'd like to read more of those because I've started reading more of those as more of those have come out like Children of Blood and Bone and Beasts of Prey. And they're really good. And I really enjoyed them like Legendborn too. So if those keep coming, I'd like to read more of those as well. So. Um, I'd like to read more um, Black authors, but like more so classic Black authors, because um, I recently saw on TikTok that like an older like classic um, author was someone named Nene Simone, I believe, and she's like written like romance, of course, <laughs> but like I would I would like put it in, to, in like relation of like she was a older Jenny Han because apparently she's written like a bunch of like classic romance teen romance stuff so she seems interesting so I would read her um I do want to read more own voices as well and then just not more black author but just more so people of color um so of course different races but um I think that would be interesting and I also would like to do more of the fantasy as well and kind of step away from the romance just like the typical YA you know um so Jada Toni Morrison I'm sure you know who Toni Morrison is um but like she's a really good author I highly recommend her she's a person I want to read more of this year who I did not mention in my to this year list. Um, so for me, my goals, I have mentioned this, I'm not a big goal person, but I would love to read like more nonfiction um, about race and racism because I don't gravitate towards nonfiction. <laughs> really, really don't. Um, and so like so reading just a little bit more of that would be nice. And then yeah, I don't know. I really want to just read more own voices stuff in general, specifically nonfiction because like Caroline I generally just gravitate towards like fantasy or sci-fi but there is like but um but you know now um now there is a growing number of own voices like sci-fi and fantasy books which is also really cool but especially I just want to read more nonfiction in general um just to get more of like realistic perspectives of things but um but I don't know. I, I don't know. I just want to read more in general because I don't. Uh, I'm in a early January reading slump because of how the end of 2021 was. But um, but yeah. So that's my answer for the last question. Um, I want to thank Caroline and Jada for being able to stay here until the end. Um, everyone else has had to leave, which is probably because. We're having a weird recording time. It's Monday and we normally do this on Sundays, but you know, things happen. Um, but yeah, so, and since Taylor's not here, I get to talk about what's gonna happen next week, which is probably gonna be a lot of me talking because we're doing kind of a combination sci-fi comic book episode, um, which I'm really excited about because I really like comic books and sci-fi. And um, it'll be it'll be something we've kind of never done before because we don't generally dive into um, either of those. If we do something like that, it's generally about fantasy because that's more of what um, the group as a whole reads. But um, there's a lot of really fun stuff. Um, I'm excited to host that. I hope the people are are excited to be a part of it. Um, but yeah, so that's all I have. If anyone is listening out there in the internet world, I hope they have an amazing week and they will do great things. And to the Caroline Jada who are still here with me, you will have a great week and you will do great things. And I'm going to end the recording now, but thank you for listening. If you've made it this long, follow us or something on everything's called on the shelf pod.
because we couldn't get podcasts. But yeah, so anyways, thank you. <laughs> Record on this computer. I'm recording now. Yay. Okay. Goodbye, Taylor. Thank you for being here. And she's gone. Okay. So uh, I'll restate it just, you know, for um, not contingency sake, but just so it'll seem cleaner. Um, what are what are what are all of our reading goals for books in this area? Yes, Caitlin, you can go first. I'm so sorry about that. I um, I was like, oh no. Fine. Um, I have like three main ones, I think. Um, I really appreciated what you guys were saying about that because like I want to read some more nonfiction and essay type books um, by people of color to get more of like um, like experience perspective and um, hear the kind of things that they're witnessing that are going on firsthand um, and get to learn more about it. Um, so that's definitely one goal because I don't think I do enough of that. Um, and then I also want to read some more YA stories written by people of color and read more YA stories with weeds that are people of color. Um, so I'd like to do some more of both of that because um, uh, I have, I know a couple of like some of my um, authors that I really enjoy reading um, are, but I don't think I have enough diversity in that kind of stuff that I read and in the main characters that I get to read about. Um, so those are a couple of things that I am definitely hoping to do um, lots more of this year. So hopefully I will have some more stuff on my shelf to share soon um, with that in mind. For me, my main goal, I guess, would be to read the TBR civil rights books that I mentioned earlier, like the George Dake book and the Angie Thomas book and the rest of them too. So that would be my main goal to finish those because they're my TBR. And also, I guess it would be like similar to what Caroline was talking about, about how more fantasy books these days are being written by people of color with people of color leads. I'd like to read more of those because I've started reading more of those as more of those have come out like Children of Blood and Bone and Beasts of Prey and they're really good and I really enjoyed them like Legendborn too so if those keep coming I'd like to read more of those as well. So. Um, I'd like to read more um, Black authors but like more so classic Black authors because um, I recently saw on TikTok that like an older like classic um, author was someone named Nene Simone, I believe, and she's like written like romance, of course, <laughs> but like I would I would like put it in, to, in like relation of like she was a older Jenny Han because apparently she's written like a bunch of like classic romance, teen romance stuff. So she seems interesting. So I would read her. Um, I do want to read more own voices as well. And then just not more black author, but just more so people of color. Um, so of course, different races, but um, I think that would be interesting. And I also would like to do more of the fantasy as well and kind of step away from the romance, just like the typical YA, <laughs> you know. Um, so Jada. Toni Morrison, I'm sure you know who Toni Morrison is, um, but like she's a really good author. I highly recommend her. She's a person I want to read more of this year who I did not mention in my to read this year list. Um, so for me, my goals, I have mentioned this, I'm not a big goal person, but I would love to read like more nonfiction um, about race and racism because I don't gravitate towards nonfiction. <laughs> really really don't um and so like so reading just a little bit more of that would be nice and then also i would love to read more stories in the lane of like you should see me in a crowd like the people of color who are living life and like um where am i going with this uh like less <laughs> Less of like a really difficult book, but more of like a path. I don't know. Just like more. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Yeah. I don't know. I really want to just read more own voices stuff in general, specifically 
nonfiction because like Caroline I generally just gravitate towards like fantasy or sci-fi but there is like but um but you know now um now there is a growing number of own voices like sci-fi and fantasy books which is also really cool but especially I just want to read more non-fiction in general um just to get more of like realistic perspectives of things but um but I don't know I, I don't know I just want to read more in general because I don't uh, I'm in a early January reading slump because of how the end of 2021 was but um but yeah, so that's my answer for the last question. Um, I want to thank Caroline and Jada for being able to stay here until the end. Um, everyone else has had to leave, which is probably because we're having a weird recording time. It's Monday and we normally do this on Sundays, but you know, things happen. Um, but yeah, so, and since Taylor's not here, I get to talk about what's gonna happen next week, which is, probably going to be a lot of me talking because we're doing kind of a combination sci-fi comic book episode um which I'm really excited about because I really like comic books and sci-fi and um it'll be it'll be something we've kind of never done before because we don't generally dive into um either of those if we do something like that it's generally about fantasy because that's more of what um the group as a whole reads but um there's a lot of really fun stuff um i'm excited to host that i hope the people are happy are excited to be a part of it um but yeah so that's all i have if anyone is listening out there in the internet world i hope they have an amazing week and they will do great things and to the caroline and jada who are still here with me you will have a great week and you will do great things and I'm going to end the recording now, but thank you for listening. If you've made it this long, follow us or something on everything's called on the shelf pod because we couldn't get podcasts, but yeah. So anyways, thank you. <laughs> to learn more about on the shelf, visit on the shelf.wordpress.com for blog posts, recent episodes, and book recs, or check out our Insta at on the shelf podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, rate us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts.